welcome to another episode of the Bottom of the Stream Movie Show. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome back to the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. We are here to delve deep and delve long. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be long this week. Into, into the Netflix stream as we search for hidden gems of movies. It's what we do. It's what we've been doing for a very but long with time. Words yeah. that make sense. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we're back. We're episode back. Three. Episode three. Episode three of season 10. And it, uh, Robin randomised us last week with a German movie. Sure. No more than a German comedy movie called Hard Feelings. Hard Feelings was released in 2023. It came out in May 2023. So it's less than a year old, this movie, believe it or not. It's no rating in the UK. It's rated as a TVMA. But not, and I haven't found anywhere where it's actually got a rating. I, I've just literally, before we started, yeah. out of just put into the ether that I'm not sure this is a movie. No, I don't think As it is. As in like, is, is this just some TV episodes put together? And I don't know, Just uh, the only reason I'm saying that right now as well is because you've just said that about a rating. <laughs> it's a TVMA, it's a mature TV show. Mm. Um, yeah, we'll get to it, but it, is, it definitely feels like a TV show. It runs for one hour and 42 minutes, currently rated at 4.8 out of 10 on IMDb, and is a Netflix original. 4.8 out of 10? Too high? I don't know. Maybe? I don't know that it is too high. About right? Too low? What are you saying? Oh, I, th- I don't think it's... I don't think it's... I don't think that's too far off. We've... I, We've seen bad films in this genre before, yeah. and I don't think it's at that that level, or quite at that level. It's not fuck it list bad. It's not buddy games bad. I'll say right now, I was never offended by this film. No, I don't think I was. Other than the fact that it's just not very good. But we'll get to that. Uh, this film stars a guy called Tobias Schaefer. He plays Charlie. It stars a lady called Kasima Henman. She plays Paula. It stars a lady called Monica Oshek. She is credited as Hoo-Ha. Okay. And it stars a guy called Ton Beck, and he's credited as Willy. Yeah. Because this film's about talking genitals. Yeah, man. Um, this film was directed by a guy called Kranz Henman, and has no credited writer on IMDb. And I watched the credits at the end of the movie, and no credited writer in the credits either. Does that mean the whole thing's improvised? Does that mean <laughs> that somebody doesn't want to admit to writing it? I think that's more likely. It's very strange. I don't know why. I think it might be a an error somewhere because Grant Herman wrote and directed every other film he's done. So I think it might be that he just wrote it and somebody's forgot to put it in the credits. Yeah, maybe. Maybe <laughs> he just didn't feel he was the need. Yeah, maybe. Do you uh, have a one-word review? P's and V's. P's and V's. Talking P's and V's. That's yeah. what it is. Where does this film start, Nick? Uh, this starts at a kid's... Swimming party. It does indeed. I've written the word bums, boobs and bodies is my first note. Yeah. Because that's what we get a month. The film starts with a montage of bums, boobs and bodies. Yeah. Uh, In a pool. I I said, is it a party or is it a swimming lesson? I don't really know. It's a swimming lesson at school. But it's done as a sort of montage. Because there's also a flashback going on at the same time. So Charlie is our main character in this film. And he is about to dive off a diving board at the start of this movie, in a swimming lesson at a school. Uh, But he is being chanted at by his peers, and they are chanting Charlie Nodick over and over again. They are, yeah. And he eventually jumps in. Um, But this is also interspersed with a montage of the same people from when he they were a lot younger. Yeah. 12, maybe, a bit younger than that? Yeah, maybe. And the same thing's happening. He's standing by the side of a pool, and he's being chanted Charlie Nodick because somebody pulls his pants down. He gets de-pantsed. He gets de-pantsed. And, yeah, that's when they start chanting Charlie Nodick at him. And that name and has stuck. Like this name has stuck for a few years. How yeah. old are Charlie and Paula in this film supposed to be playing, Nick? 18. No. There's, they are, but they're not playing that age. Oh, she can think. drive, though. So 17. Oh, true. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I was really confused by that because everybody's really old. <laughs> and I was really confused by the the where we were in this. I don't know if we were at a high school or a college or, or what. Yeah. If we were at a high school... I, I, if we were I, at a sorry, college, but I apologise in advance. My knowledge of the German schooling system is not the if best. If we were at a college, why are we having a swimming lesson? It, well, yes, fair. 
Uh, but anyway, the film cuts from that montage into its title card. And we come, and the title card's with a load of his school friends dancing around. Yeah. And then he runs off from this bullying. He's embarrassed. Yeah, he goes and hides in the changing goes rooms. Goes and hides in the changing rooms. And the rest of the some of the other boys in the come, in. come in. One of them's got a massive wang. A massive wang. Because he's like, oh, helicopter. Yeah. And you and see, you can, you, it see like it, it, you can hear it going like, oh, don't ever do that again. <laughs> Against his thighs. Ugh. You can, and you can see the shadow of yeah. it as well. And there's like three lads and they're just bantering about two of them then kiss each other. So they're like all open-minded and fine. Yeah, well, they, they do, don't they? And they're, yeah. they're like, uh, oh, the girls don't know what they're missing, only limiting themselves to one sex. Yeah. And c- the the other guy that isn't bisexual, as I'm assuming these guys are, he was. they were saying that to him as well, weren't yeah. they? And it was like, it was lads banter, but they were also kissing. Um, they, they leave. Charlie comes out of his hiding space and finds that his yogurt is leaked in his bag. Yeah. There's a yogurt theme in this movie. Do you... <laughs> what? I was like... <laughs> Is this movie trying to tell me that only nerds eat yogurt? What, nerds and nerds dads. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Uh, then he gets picked up. He gets dressed, gets changed, gets picked up by his. I friend. mean, in a way, surely, like from a uh, criticism, a cinema critique. Yeah, the yogurt spilling in his bag. Yes, is clearly a metaphor. Of course. <laughs> for for something else spilling <laughs> out of his bag. <laughs> Which does happen later on in the movie. The subtlety of this movie is, is there oh, for all Oh, it's as subtle see. as a sledgehammer. Um, he gets picked up by his friend. His friend is called Paulish. He drives a little yellow clown car. Yes, he does, yes. <laughs> and they drive off together. They, uh, it feels like they've been friends for a long time and it feels like they're the only... She picks him up, takes him to school. Yeah, drops him yeah. off. She goes to school there as well. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Um, it's that sort it feels of... like they're, they're the only two friends that each other have got. Yeah, and they've been friends since they were like yeah, tiny. tiny. And they talk about his big solo performance that he's got to do tomorrow. Yeah, he's in the school choir. He's in the school choir. And when he gets home, he his parents are discussing the merits of fridges and how you should stack a fridge. Yeah. Um, because his dad is obsessed with yogurt. Yeah. And trying to put the yogurt in the right place in the fridge for the optimum temperature is what they're discussing. But he's also been to the wholesaler or something yeah. and come back with a load of out-of-date yogurt. Yes. Which does he doesn't think will be a problem. But Charlie's mum thinks it will be a problem yeah. because he is lactose, to quote, he's lactose intolerant and sharts all night. <laughs> yeah. Is what she says. Which is an she, issue. She is, uh, is yeah. My farting sub- all night is an issue. My subtitle says something like, "You're not the one who has to lie next to you sharting all, all night. night." Yeah, it's pretty much what she said. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really strange. Um, I thought that was quite funny. Yeah, it was a funny. It was just a weird. I don't know if I actually laughed out loud. No. I laughed out loud at you saying it. Then... <laughs> I feel like you laugh out loud at films a lot more than I do. Yeah, so, I thought I'm an easier laugh than you. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, Cut back to Paula. Paula's also at home now. She has been sent a dick pic by somebody she knows and she is not happy but, about yeah, it. Yeah, but before this, I just want to, again, seriously, from a like uh, production cinematography point of view, I really like this bit. She goes up gate to game in her room. Yeah. And she's got like the yeah, she's a game gaming PC. She puts, you know, puts headphones on and stuff. And then like the, the room becomes the cockpit of this spaceship. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Yeah, it was cool. And then she snaps out of it when someone sends her a dick pic. Somebody pic. sends her a dick pic. She and she's just like, oh, boys, throws yeah, it away. Throws it away. She's not happy about it. Um, Charlie and Paula have this like area at Paula's house where they can go outside and sit. They sit on like the flat roof. Yeah. And that's where Got they a couple seem of to, chairs. Yeah, that's where they seem to hang out and sit yeah. and chat. So they're sitting and chatting. They have a bit of a moment. Um, and then suddenly Paula says, why has it gone really quiet? Yeah. Because every, everything the stops, stop the birds stop singing, and everything yeah. goes quiet. And then, completely out of nowhere... I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't I'll expecting it, it at the all. Film this. Um, they both get struck by lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Made me jump, because it comes like, all of a sudden, nobody's expecting it. It does, makes them jump quite a lot, but they have no side effects or ill effects or anything at the time from this. I don't think it was a direct hit. No, it wasn't. Because she says, like, oh, it was right in front of us. Yeah. But... And they're not seeing the story. Still gonna oh notice. yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was more of a magic bolt of lightning <laughs> rather than actual lightning. Uh, but they both freak out. She's like, "Oh my god, that was amazing! How yeah. lucky we were!" And Charlie's just like stunned. Stunned. Silent. Yeah, he's like, "This that was weird." Uh, we cut to the next morning. Charlie wakes up 
in a state that some males have woken up to in this it's past. It's tent It's <laughs> That's a great, great way of putting it. Uh, but he could also hear a voice. Yeah. So he's like, like who is that? Up. What is that? I'm ready. Um, that sort of thing. That sort of thing. And it is his dick. Yeah. Talking to him. Of course. Um, at this point, obviously that's going to make you freak out. It does make him freak out. Yeah, and then there's a whole bit with his parents like, what are you making noise for? Come yeah, in they and come in and they're like, and they're like oh, they're, you're masturbating, we'll yeah. go away. And then his dad is like proud of him. and His dad watches him for a little <laughs> bit because he does, he's like, no, they think he's talking to his dick, which he was. Then he goes off into the bathroom to masturbate. And then his dad walks in and catches him doing that. And then stands and watches him for ages. And then leaves. And then his mum comes in. Up. It's all very awkward. <laughs> and they're like, oh, did you want to lift school? And they're like, yeah. I don't wear the trumpet, like open and like... No, very like, open. Give, give, me yeah. a, give me some privacy. But all the while through this, his dick is still talking to him. Yeah. And he's the only one who can hear this. Um, On the way to school, he goes to school on his bike. Paula tries to pick him up. Yeah, but he's he's in a full on panic. Yeah, because his dick's talking to him. <laughs> but he's riding on his bike. I'm going to say dick too much in this. He's thing. riding on his bike. And he's like... He goes off road, doesn't he? Down the stairs and stuff. Yeah. And his dick's going like, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> and every bounce. Like, it's hurting me as much as it's hurting you. <laughs> that you that bit did make me? me laugh. I must admit. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, Paula wants to give him a lift, but he doesn't yeah. want to lift. And she even follows him down the, in a she little does, clown yeah. car down the bike track. Yeah. Uh, and he, to the point where uh, Charlie crashes his bike and he goes over the handlebars. Yeah. Um, and Willie's like, "Sleep with her, sleep with her, and I'll stop talking." Don't say Willie. Um, yeah, basically, so the Willie then says to him, <laughs> I've done it now, um, if you, I will leave when you sleep with someone. That's the deal here. I'm I'm here, presumably somehow from this bolt of lightning this yeah. has happened. Um, what a shit superpower to get. <laughs> yeah. um, I will leave when you sleep with someone. It might as well be Paula. That's what the dick yeah. says to him. Um, and Charlie doesn't want to be a boner loner, which is a phrase that's used quite a lot in this movie. Um, he gets to school. Oh, we um, find out his dad is like the, the caretaker. The, that's where it's the, going. Yeah, the janitor there. The caretaker at the school, and he tells Charlie that he'll fix his bike's broke because he obviously fell down some yeah. stairs. On. He's like, "Leave it with me. I'll, Leave it with I'll me. Sort I'll fix it your out. bike." Um, he's still ignoring Paula. He ignores her for most of the day at this school. Also, we're mere days away from final exams. Yes. So the teacher's teaching a class about focus and concentration, and and Charlie isn't focused or concentrating. No, because his dick's just sitting. There. He's yeah. just sitting there. <laughs> his dick's just there going, "Fucking." Fuck it. Like just talking <laughs> just about talking fucking. all the way through this. Uh, so Charlie distracts the teacher. It, Charlie says like, "Oh, shut up!" Yeah, and everyone's like, "Who what are you talking fuck? to?" What? And then he's like, "I need to shit," and he just walks out of the room, and the whole room bursts out laughing at him. Um, so he goes to the toilet because well, he's going to masturbate again for the second time in this day. No, but he hadn't <laughs> because he feels like I don't. Yeah, but his parents because of his parents he hadn't, walking, he, he, hadn't hadn't he hadn't finished. Completed. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I hate this. So he's like, he's like, I'm gonna wank this voice away. <laughs> yeah, basically, if I if I complete myself, I will um, get rid of this voice. Yeah, and he does, and there's all this gold it's, confetti falls on, and him it's and quiet it. for a few seconds. A few seconds, and it doesn't work. Um. So we cut to the choir performance. Yes, we've got visiting students on their like student yes. exchange program. Yes. Um, from another going, school. So the choir are going to perform for these students. Yeah. And they're going to perform Love is All Around by Wet Wet Wet. Because why aren't why wouldn't you in a German high school? Um Charlie has the solo performance in this. Yeah. And he it becomes the time for his solo performance. He steps forward and he has a boner. Yeah, because his dick's like, oh, look at that exchange student on the first row. Yeah. She's staring at you, she's hot for you. Well, let's go for it. He doesn't hide it very well, and everybody sees this, this fact that he has a boner. And he runs off. He freaks out, runs off the stage, forgetting that he is still mic'd up. Yeah. And he then has an argument with his dick in front of the whole school. Which is broadcast across the Which hall. ends with him saying, why am I horny all the time? Yeah. And obviously the whole school is here. That everybody Didn't this happy. exact thing happen in the last season of Sex Education? Yeah. You never finished it, did you? I didn't ever finish it, but... I'm pretty sure it did. Anyway. This this film is a cross between Big Mouth and Sex Education. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yes. Why, where, 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 where's those influences? Jason Mazzucchi should be doing the voice of the dick, because that's <laughs> just that's what he is. Um, yeah, Paula... They go... At, at the end of that school day, they go back to Paula's house. Uh, the vid- yeah, the, and she says, this video is going viral, because yeah. obviously this 
everyone recorded it. Yeah, but she says it's not as bad as you think. But yeah. then she says it's going viral. Um, and she starts rubbing his shoulders. She starts massaging him to try yeah. and cheer him up. And she's like, oh, have your muscles grow? Yes. And then she asks him if she wants to sleep with her. Yeah. And his dick's like, yes, 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 over and over again. But Charlie says no. Charlie says no. Charlie says no. <laughs> and she leaves all embarrassed. She runs to the bathroom. And this is the point where we find out that Paula's vulva is also talking to her. Yeah. Um, so she's being told, she's getting exactly the same information. They're both that. arguing with their bits yeah. separated by the, the wall. She's in the bathroom, he's in the bedroom. Uh, they're at Charlie's house. Paula leaves. Um, and Charlie then makes a deal with his dick. Yeah. He says, if you let me pass my finals, yeah. and if it isn't Paula, I will sleep with somebody at the end of the school year. Is that a deal? And the dicks agrees, the dick agrees with that. Um, at that point, we realised that his mum and dad seem to have split up Off without camera, him noticing. Overnight. Yeah, and Charlie they have hasn't grown noticed. Apart, <laughs> yeah. And his dad is now living at the school. Yeah. So, I don't know why that's happened, but they've split up and nobody's noticed. Um, and Charlie has a bit of a one-to-one with his dad, tells him to try and win her back. I think his dad might have been my favourite character in this movie. His dad's really good, isn't he? Yeah. It's really silly, but he's really good. Yeah. He had the fun role, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, when he gets to school, he realises that he has gone viral. viral he's internet famous. He's internet famous Everyone's now. Everybody, in everybody wants selfies. to be friends with this guy. The boner boy, they call him. They say him. he's an inspiration. Yes. Uh, and the hot exchange student approaches him. Yeah, Francoise yeah. approaches him. She is the hot French girl that's at the school. And he asks her out. He well, she looks up the courage. She asks him out first. Yeah. But he and then he goes, oh, "I'm not sure." She's disappointed, and he says, "I'm not sure because I wanted to ask you, you out." Yeah, he plucks up the courage to do it, and I was quite proud of him at that point. Uh, and Paula obviously sees it because that's yes. what always happens in these films. Because Francois says, "Yes, I will go out with you. I am a French girl." <laughs> <laughs> that might have been her exact line. Who knows? <laughs> um, meanwhile, Paula is going through some shit because yeah, she's talking to a Volvery who's like, "Oh, yeah." You're, you're still hung up on what happened a couple of years ago. Yeah. You need to get over it. And she starts talking about this crush that she had, a holiday romance yeah. that she had a few years ago. Um, and she messed it up. She was gonna. She was with, in a relationship with this guy. She was about what? to sleep with him on the beach. Not a relationship. Yeah. And she, and she started crying. Him. Yes, just as he was about to... Well, he, he was... <laughs> they were getting handsy. It, yeah, really. and, she, and he was like, why are you upset? And there was a song in the background. She said, oh, this reminds me of my dad and he's dead. Yeah. And then the guy just goes, well, you feel weird down there anyway. I walked off. Yeah, what was that all about? I don't know. It was really <laughs> horrible. Yeah, it was. Um, but she's never really got over that. And Paula also has this 10-year-old sister. This is another trope Penelope. I think we've seen loads. Now, yeah. she's only in about a few scenes, but this like young sister who is worldly wise. Yeah, the voice of reason yeah. in the world. The world is... She's watching a video on YouTube about the Kama Sutra, yeah. this 10-year-old girl. Everybody's into sex. Um, but so Paula says... Well, Paula's vagina says to her... Oh, I've just said vagina. Um, you've never actually even looked at me. You don't know what yeah. I look like. You've never seen me. So Paula goes to her little sister to try and borrow a hand mirror. Yeah. Which she does. Um, And she sits and has a look at it. Well, yeah, but it's intercut with Willie telling Ch- Charlie's... <laughs> They're looking at each other as well. Yeah. And Willie's like, shave me. Yeah, you need a haircut. Make me look bigger. Yeah. And like, also, what's wrong with these scummy underwear? Yeah, get some new underwear. Get out there. Let's go shopping. You need to... If I'm going to get unwrapped, I want to be a nice Pumps. gift wrap. <laughs> um. So he does. He starts get, having a little trim. And guess who would walk in in this house where nobody has any privacy? Charlie's mum walks in and yeah. catches him shaving himself. She's like, that's my razor. Yeah. And then she takes him boxers shopping. Yeah, that's a good shopping. Some new pants. Um, Paula's vagina then teaches her how to pleasure herself, which oh, is also something Charlie, she's never done yeah, before. Yeah, also Charlie's mum's now on swiping right Yeah, she's on left. Tinder or whatever it is. Yeah. Because um, she gets like, she matches someone and gets an eggplant. Yes. And he's, she's like, oh, is he he's vegan? chef, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, so Paul is now experimenting. She's experimenting to the point where she then goes, she figures out how to do it, and then she goes to a sex shop. And she is being guided around this sex shop by her vagina. Yeah. And she spots some sexy, sexy lingerie. Sure. Which she would like to try on, which she does try on. Um, 
And my next note says, trips over a British guy. Yeah, so she le- she tr- puts this underwear on and then leaves the changing room. She leaves the changing room because the vagina said that it was too tight and they needed a bigger size. Yeah. So instead of taking it off and getting changed, she just walks out in this sexy lingerie. Yeah, and... Into the middle of this sex shop. And this dude works there. Yeah, this British guy yeah. works there for some And he's random... like, oh yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. Was, uh... She literally trips over him. He's she trips over. Yeah, well, she trips over, but she... she uh... She keeps her balance by yeah. grabbing onto a massive dildo. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and he's like, he just goes, "Oh yeah, it's a good choice. That's a very popular model." Yeah, he's like non plus player yeah. at all. Um, meanwhile, through the window of this sex shop, because all sex shops have windows. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, uh, friends can see. Not that I've ever been in one. Um, her friends can see her in this sexual lingerie, holding a dildo, talking to a hot British. Yeah. Guy. Um, so that rumor's going around school. So that she, instantly. yeah, that, yeah. Um, they start a rumor that she might be a hooker. Um, she goes home, uses her new sex toy that she has purchased, and then goes... That seems to do the trick. Yeah, she sorts herself out. She then goes to meet up with Charlie. It's really awkward. Um, Charlie apologises. Um, their genitals are also chatting at the same time. They kind of want each other. Um, but he absolutely friend zones her. Yeah, yeah. He slaps her right into the friend zone. Yeah. And... The next day, Paula seems to take that on the chin. She's all right with it at this point in the movie. Um, because the next day, she starts noticing all the hot guys in the school. Yeah, but now now she's... Uh, it's almost like she's free. Yeah, she's she's now just like a total horn dog. Yeah. And then we get like a Vox Pop interview segment about of boys talking about their boner embarrassment. Yeah, like, oh, it happens but without warning. But they're just talking straight and... at the camera. Yeah, it was weird. I put, it's like Vox Pops yeah. with horny students. Yeah, it was about four or five... Guys talking to, about embarrassing like bonus stories. Yeah, like they're being interviewed by nobody. And then it just goes back to the movie. Yeah, it's so weird. Um, and and the, the, the previous, the cool boys who were from the start of the movie, yeah. they're now jealous of all the attention that Charlie's, Charlie's got getting. as a viral inspiration. Absolutely. And the hot girl, the hot girl in the school is called Marlene. Yeah. And she is like hot for Charlie now. Yeah. Because he's like... Uh, she could, she feels like she can use him, I think. She's throwing a cool party. She, she wants is. the exposure. She does. And uh, invites him. So she invites him to a cool party. So Constantine... She thinks he's cute. ...who is the popular boy yeah. who was with Marlene, he then asks Paula out. Yes, to the party. So Constantine is Marlene's ex. Yeah. And he is They're now going... trying to make each other jealous. Yeah, they are trying to make each other jealous with the popular kids. Uh, Charlie goes to talk to his dad. He uh, wants some advice about how, what do we do with two girls wanting to go out yeah. at the same time. And his dad Im- advises him to take Francoise on a date to Marlene's party. Yeah. Which is bad advice. Um, but it, that's what he does because the next, very next, we don't hang around in this film at all. Oh, there's a bit just in between where the dad gets to be in, gets oh, yeah. called into the head teacher's office because she's starting to suspect he lives in the school. Yes. Which he does. Which he does. And then there's a whole joke about a pneumatic chair that keeps going down. Yeah, they do the chair joke yeah. that's been done yeah. numerous times before. Um, we cut st- This film doesn't hang around. We cut straight to this party that everybody's been talking about. Straight it doesn't hang on. The party doesn't hang around because it's straight in the shots. Straight to the shots. Francoise wants to get on the shots. Um, the dick, though, the willy, does not like hard liquor. Because no. hard liquor it's does like, not no, equal no, it's not hard good dick. For me. Yeah. Charlie ignores it. Cause... Paul... Go on, sorry. Go on, go on. I was going to say, Paula, meanwhile, overhears every, basically every girl at the party yeah. now talking about her as, as a tramp because this, this uh, rumour of her yeah, blowing the guy at the sex shop. <laughs> Don't say blowing. Ooh. What I do want to say about this movie in a positive light is that it is trying to say something which is a really worthy issue about the difference between how a if you are perceived to be a promiscuous male yeah. that is cool and gives you sh- credence in this sort of social setting yeah. but if that rumor of you as a female goes around then it is a, so negative and but it that's exactly what this movie's trying to do but it so, never quite it no. never goes the whole step to really Batter it home. Yeah, so to speak. <laughs> but no, no, that is the message of this movie, though. Yeah, it, it is. It's yeah. exactly what this movie is trying to tell. Charlie and Paula are both going for identical things. Yeah. But one of them is getting treated like a hero and one of them is getting exactly. treated like a pariah. 
Um, Charlie, we find out when he gets drunk, lets his dick do the talking because they're, the dick and Charlie are doing the same, same, the same what, thing. They're saying the yeah. same thing at the same time. Um, and he says the line, because Marlene and Francoise are both there and it's yeah. awkward and they're, they're both, they're all three of them are chatting. And he says, I have a big enough penis for both of you. <laughs> Remember, this is Charlie No Dick we're talking about. Um, she, Paula is fed up of hearing about people slagging her off. So she goes up to Constantine, tells her she's, she's going to go home. Constantine as well. What a name. <laughs> uh, she tells him he's going home, but he convinces her to stay. He says, talk, let's talk, let's about, go and talk it. about it in the bedroom. <laughs> Constantine, remember, is the big like heartthrob of the school. Everybody yeah. loves him. Um, so she talk, starts to open up a bit and then he just leaps on her, basically. Yeah, he takes his trousers off yeah. and then instantly finishes off. <laughs> I don't think she even touched him. She didn't touch him. Um, he grabs a pillow and... But hoo-ha says, ooh, micro penis. Yes. Or what is that effect? Yeah. mini. I think it was mini peeping. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and he also finishes off into a pillow. And he gets really... Em- <laughs> he does. He gets really embarrassed. Um, he starts punching the wall. And she's like, look, I won't say anything. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. She gives him a hug. Um, and they leave the room and the dog comes in the room. And licks this pillow. Yeah, and then Constantine meets up with his friends downstairs yep. and instantly goes, ah, oh, she's a slag. And what a weirdo. Yeah, sex addict. She's well into anal. Yeah. She's all this. She starts basically telling horrible lies about Paul. Yeah. Um, Charlie, meanwhile, is really drunk. He has no top on now. Yeah, he's he's totally monged out. Yeah, he's comp- <laughs> monged out. <laughs> um, and he's really horrible to Paula. Yeah, he's awful. What does he call her? He calls her a training pussy. Yeah. As if like, yeah. She is very mortally offended by it. To the point where she never actually forgives him for it. Um, Next morning, the party's over. Charlie wakes up naked in bed, in Marlene's bed. Yes. And she tells him that they slept together. All night. All they night. did it all, all night. night. He, does, he has no remember. Uh, no remember? <laughs> he can't remember. He has it. no remember. Uh, the dick also doesn't remember because the dick hasn't left. Because yeah, because Charlie's like, left. hang on, if we did it, why are you he's still here? And he's like, I can't, if you can't remember, I can't remember. How yeah. am I supposed to know? So no, uh, And then Marlene kicks him not. out. She's like, my parents are coming back. Yes. Because Charlie's about to go, well, come on, let's do it again. Yeah. When he gets home, his mum is randomly playing Twister with some friends. Yeah, she's now become a swinger, apparently. Yeah, apparently. This has all happened in a couple of days. And it's like early morning. Early morning Twister. Yeah. Not a thing. Um, no, it's not the done. Not the done. I've never played play Twister, Twister in the morning. <laughs> um, Marlene and Charlie are now boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, because she's posted it all school. over she's the socials. Um, but this has pissed off Francoise because we haven't seen why, but he must have offended her at the yeah. party because she will not even give him the time of day. Uh, Paula, meanwhile, confronts Constantine. Yes, yeah, so like, you've been saying stuff about, about me. me. I've heard it. It's all rumors. got back to me, and he's like. Well, you're the school slut. No one's going to believe you. Yeah, because she says oh, I could tell them what really happened. Yeah. And he's like, well, who are they going to believe? The the hot boy or the school slut? Um, she overhears more girls talking about it. There's every, it's the talk of the school that Paula is a slag. Um, she tries to talk to Charlie. They have this like pig Latin language yeah. that they talk to each other in. And she, she asks him, why are you being a jerk? Yeah. And he rep- responds by being an absolute, absolute jerk. Because he completely dismisses her. <laughs> Because she said to him, aren't we a bit old? Earlier in the film, when they were just gaming about, yeah. she said to him, aren't we a bit old for pig Latin? But he says it genuinely now. He's yeah. like, aren't we a bit old for that? In front He's of like, Marlene. grow up. Yeah. In front of Marlene. Um, so we get a montage now. Yeah, there's a of montage of both. Paula being sad, yeah. but Charlie being happy. I'll give another positive to this movie. It had yeah. a good soundtrack. Yeah, it did have a good soundtrack. I'll give you that. Um, Marlene and Constantine then get together to have a chat. They discuss Charlie and Paula. Also in the montage, just before we move on, yeah. Char- we, it's also a montage of Charlie's mum realising that things are going missing from her house. Yeah. Uh, and Charlie's dad's moving them into his office at the <laughs> school. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she goes to put a magazine down on a side table it's not there and anymore. it just hits the floor. Yeah. I thought it was quite nice. That was quite funny. Um Marlene and Constantine have a bit of a chat about each other and Charlie and they're both trying to make each other jealous about their new yeah. conquests. Um, and Marlene tells Charlie that she is saving their next time till after the dance. because, And he says, I would like to get to know her a bit better if they're yeah. going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. 
Um, she's got no interest in that whatsoever. She's like, oh, you're a Pisces. I'm not interested. We yeah. can't. We're not compatible. Yeah. Um, Marlene and Constantine then randomly have a canoodle in the toilets. Yeah. Which Paula overhears, walks out, tells, says to Charlie, "You don't want to go in there," and he does go in there. And, and he's gutted. He's absolutely gutted because they're talking about him and how they didn't sleep together. On yeah, that. Marlene says, uh, no, he passed out. We never did it. Yes. And he storms off crying. We get another scene between the head teacher and Charlie's dad. And she yes. is, she's basically like, I won't tell anyone that you're living here. Yeah, I was like, is something going on between these two at this I point? I thought that's where it was going. I thought it was where it was and going then, as well. No. It wasn't. Um, she just had a soft spot for him. Yeah, like I think the... she did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he was a character, I guess. Uh, Charlie's mum then sits down with Charlie and asks him if she's seen his dad because she misses him. She's trying to yeah, miss him. Yeah, she's yeah. Um, and Charlie dismisses his mum. She's quite he's quite horrible to her actually. He tells her that he hasn't seen his dad and that he's also dropped out of choir and then he kicks her out of his room. Yeah. Um, and she says, "Okay, well, I'll leave you alone anyway because you've got to study because it's your yeah, final she exam." Says, "Good tomorrow. luck for your exam tomorrow." Like Charlie, I had totally forgotten <laughs> that Same. it was exams week. Charlie has totally forgotten and stays up all night studying and yeah. ends up falling asleep at his desk. He does and doesn't write a single word. I we don't cut. Think we cut to the exam and he is asleep on the yeah. exam table and misses the whole thing. He doesn't write a single word. Um, it's quite funny. The teacher's quite funny when he tries to pick up the exam paper and Charlie won't let it go. Yeah. And he's like, because he, well, he's woken up by this point. He's like digging his pen into the page. Uh, he leaves the exam hall. Obviously distraught that he's missed this final sure. exam. He's messed it up. And the first thing he sees is Constantine and Marlene kissing and then getting on the back of his motorbike together and driving off. Yeah. So Charlie goes and gets back on the booze. He does. He goes and has a drink. He's walking down in the biggest movie cliche of all time by a river with yeah. a bottle of booze arguing with himself like a drunk and he take he breaks the bottle and he decides he's going to cut his dick off yeah sure this whole thing is his dick fault because it won't shut up and it's his fault and he's, and it's, he's it's genuinely like just about yeah. to do it yeah his dick is screaming um and he looks up right he hears a voice doesn't he and yeah. he can hear somebody else on a bridge above on him. a bridge above him arguing seemingly with themselves so and it's paula also drunk also drunk and also just about to jump off, jump the, bridge. off the bridge um, and Charlie goes up to talk to her. He's like, oh, I'm not having her jumping off a bridge. Finally. Finally. They work out they've both got the same power. They've both got talking genitals. Yeah. And that seems to calm them both down. He talks her down off the bridge. But it, yes, she talks her down, but then they get back in an argument, and she says, quite rightly, because she is in the right, yeah. that she says to Charlie, you let me down when I needed you the most. Yeah. I needed help. No one stuck up for me. She calls him a bad friend. Yeah. And then she walks away from him. She, You felt like that was going to be their like moment where they become friends again. Yeah. In a movie, that's what would happen. But this doesn't happen in this movie. She's like, no, she walks away from him. Um, he then goes to visit his dad again to get some advice. He's like, I don't, I'd, I've lost her. I loved her. Yeah, oh, she's well, my best friend. She's been. She's my best friend, friend but I think actually, I think there could be more. And yeah. What should I do? And his dad says, "You need to tell her what she means to you, but you might. You've done wrong. Yeah, it you might. might not, you might, you not might have to this. let her go. Yeah, you might have. You might have to let her go. Actual good advice. Yes. I would suggest. He also then tells his dad not to give up on his mum. Yeah. Um, porks and pork. <laughs> you, pork. You've got pork on the brain. Always. Um, Paula then goes to talk to her little sister about how much she misses their dad because I think their dad's dead. Yes. Is, I don't, yeah. is it mentioned that she's dead? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She's got a photo of him, and yes, of course she has. So, but the little sister says, oh, "I, no, I'm only ten. I never really knew dad. Yeah. Um, you're the strongest person I've ever met. You're, you're my like father figure in my life, and that like kind of." regenerates Paula back to what she was before. Yeah. That's what she wanted to hear, I think. The next morning, Charlie apologises to Paula, Paula, who does this whole big speech to her. Um, he says, I've got an idea to get us some revenge. Yeah, because she tells him that, that what Constantine's got a tiny willy. Yeah. And Charlie goes, ah, oh, okay, that gives me an idea. We'll get some revenge on these two. And But Paula, crucially, she says, I will help you yeah. because these guys deserve payback. Yeah. But after we have done whatever this plan is, I'm not being your friend. Yeah. We're done. I will help you, but I will not forgive you. Yeah. She says, uh, after this, we are done. They 
go. They, we're then at the school party. There's no hanging it's the around prom. in this movie. Yeah. It's the prom. Um, they instantly, before they go in, they smash the light on they, they, Constantine's bike. They uh, they rented out this cool devil-themed club. Club, yeah. Um, when they get in, they realise they need some help. But it's still chap... I, sorry, just to, I, it, I thought this was weird at the time, and it just occurred to me again. So, like, they were like... <laughs> Either they'd rented this weird devil club out because it had all this, like, cool entrance yeah. in the shape of a devil's head. Yeah. But first I thought they were on school campus. Yeah. But if then I thought, no, they can't be because why would a school have this club? <laughs> yeah. But then the teachers were still in there chaperoning. Yeah. It, it didn't look, that doesn't make sense. No, you're right. It <laughs> does. I hadn't picked up on it at all. I just assumed they were at the campus, but you're right. They can't have been. Um. Anyway, to put this plan into action, they need help from Francois. They need a third. They need a third. So Conspirator. Paula refuses to go and speak to Francoise. She's like, you messed up with her. You need to go and sort it out. I'm not doing your dirty work for you. If we need her on board, you need to sort that out. But she Francoise won't talk to Charlie. will not give Charlie the time of day. Yeah. She, she literally turns her back on she him. She does. So Paula, Paula, not pork, <laughs> Paula. Paula has to go in to help. She has to go in and talk to Francoise. And... She, she says, that guy's a dickhead. Yeah. But we need, we need your favour. <laughs> and she makes Charlie apologise to Francoise, which he does, to be fair. Um, and we find out what happened. Um, he She completely, he ditched her at the party, basically. Yeah, but they, were, they were dancing. Marlene comes over and he just wanders off with Marlene. He doesn't even say anything to her. Um, so what they need is Francoise to go and seduce Charlie. Yeah. She's like, yeah, those guys are idiots. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I will I'm help her for you. this. So... She does. She takes him backstage. She starts seducing him. She pulls down his trousers. She de-pants him, yeah. And she... then the curtains on the stage open up yeah. and he's standing naked in front of the whole school with, with his, his tiny willy. Whatever it was, mini pee-pee. <laughs> um, and then the crowd ch- start chanting Constinodic. Yeah. Because he's... That's a better play on words, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's a bit like Constantinople. Constantinople. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. And... But they should have called him Constantino Dick anyway. Constantino Dick. Um, instantly, as soon as Constant, Constantine's face drops, he's devastated. He's super embarrassed by this. Uh, and inst- instantly, Paul is like, oh, fuck, that feels awful. Yeah. I can't believe we've just good. done that. I don't yeah. feel good about this. And Charlie must feel the same because Charlie rushes up onto the stage and depunces himself. Yeah. And they both stand there with their little But he's out. like, you all know that I'm not Charlie No Dick. Yeah. Because you've seen my loner boner. <laughs> so then they start talking about no more shaming. Let's get rid of shaming. Yeah. Let's do this. And then Paulie... Paul, fuck's sake. Paul, There's not that many ways Paul, to get the name Paula wrong. Pork, Paula, Paulie. Paula comes on stage and gets the vagina out. Sure. Uh, by the way, at this point, we've completely forgotten the subtext that the, these genitals talk to them. They haven't talked for ages. For ages. That's, I noticed that's that as gone. well. That is gone now. That's not happened for, for a for long time. For about 20 minutes, the, yeah. the, they've been quiet. Yeah, until they're, until they're exposed on stage in front of everyone and, now, and they start liking So it's it. like, this is the like, I am Spartacus moment. Yeah. Like, we're, we're no shame and we are who we are. We Everyone's should all show different. each other respect. No and more like, shaming. We can't be on school property. No. Because like, now we've got all these teenagers just dropping all of them. Do. Pantage. The whole pantage. <laughs> and, and the, the whole crowd do. The head teacher yeah. and the one other teacher at the school That's been paid as being are both standing at the bar just like, we're going to get sacked for this. Yeah. And then what well, the teacher guy tries to take his dick out. Yeah. But <laughs> the, the head teacher stops him. Um, Marlene, though, does not get involved in this. Marlene storms out. She's yeah. not happy. Um, so we've basically got a room full of teenagers with their dicks and fannies out. Um, and then I, I presume they re... Clothes, clothes and just get on with the party. They just get on, carry on with the party. Because Nobody's being bullied anymore. There's no shaming going on. Everybody's friends. World peace is solved. Exactly. And, and I think some time passes, and then the part the the venue is closing, closing. and the and the, the night's ending. So and on the way out, the head teacher tells Charlie, "See you next year." Yeah, because you messed that exam <laughs> up. That exam up, absolutely. Um, they leave. They say so Francois, Constantine. Charlie and Paula all leave together. It's like they're friends again. And Paula says to Constantine, oh, somebody smashed the light on your bike. No full whether she did it. Lights on your bike. No full whether she did it. And he like, starts freaking out. And, and she like, smashes the other no, one. No, he's like, oh, only one. You said yeah. lights, only one smashed. And so she's like, she's, oh, yeah. And she smashes knocks the, other the one. tail light out as well. Yeah. 
Um, Kyle, <laughs> Marlene then falls out with her friends because they got involved in it. He, yeah. She calls one fat and the other one says, she says stinks. And then they say, well, at least we haven't got giant feet <laughs> to Marlene. So they all Whatever. fall out. Marlene basically ends up with no friends yeah. in this movie. They hit a yeah. dog, and that's like the worst insult that she yeah. can have. Um, Constantine chases after Marlene because although he's just been through this with Charlie and Paula, he's not part of this group. Yeah. So he chases after Marlene. Um, Francoise then proposes a threesome. Yeah, she's like, you guys are all right. Yeah. You've got my details. Anytime you want to have a menage a toi, yeah. let's go for it. So, But they turn it down. Um, they... Then kiss. So when Paula says, I'm not even going to forgive you, Charlie, she does. Um, they go back to Paula's room and the genitals are going wild in more yeah, ways they, than they one. Eventually, they talk again. <laughs> they start talking and then it comes up on the screen 10 seconds later. And they clearly Charlie has finished, but Paula has not. Yep. So he says, let's go again. And then it comes up on screen 11 seconds later. Sure. And Paula still hasn't. But she then pushes his head down under the blankets. And he doth venture south. <laughs> he doth venture south. The genitals, however, have gone. They've gone quiet. Yes. Because sex has happened. Um, the next day, he leaves for Paula's house. Paula then has a bit of a celebration with her mum and sister. Yeah. Because she's lost a They're like at last. Um, Charlie's dad has a date. We're back at the school. Charlie's dad's getting ready for his date. Yeah. And Early morning date. Charlie's a bit repulsed by the fact that Charlie's going on a date with somebody else. Early morning date. That is a good point. <laughs> Charlie's getting a bit repulsed that his dad's going on a date with somebody else. He heads outside, follows his dad, and it turns out he's going on a date with Charlie's mum. Oh, yes. And they're going to a yoghurt place to get some yoghurt. Um, then the movie is coming to a close as Charlie and Paula drive off into the sunset. They're going on a road trip. I guess school's finished, hasn't school's it? School's finished. Sorry. They're going on a summer road trip together. And then suddenly we hear two little voices perk up from below the steering wheels. Oh, I thought they were on the radio. Yeah, but they, they turned the radio on, but their voices were their genitals because they both scream at the end. Oh, okay. So the genitals have not gone away. I just thought it was a thing like they were presenting the radio. They show. were. They were pretending to represent oh, the they? radio yeah. show, I think. But well, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anyway. The genitals are still there, so the deal was off and dicks lie, apparently. <laughs> That's the end of the movie. Yeah. Thoughts? Uh, it's not great. No, I, it's not great. But, but, but I didn't hate it. It's stupid. It's not going to win any awards. <laughs> no way. But it's... It's harmless enough, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it is. It's not original. No. It came out last year, so it's Big Mouth have done this. It's, it's for the last massively years. influenced by Sex educations have done Big this. Mouth for the, I guess, the concept. But the it looks like sex education. It does, yeah. In a, the, in a like a trendy school, yeah, with it's trendy time kids periods who are thirty, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sex education. It's sex education slash Big Mouth yeah. slash American Pie. It's a mashup. It's, it's a mashup of the three. Um, I didn't hate it on a scale of some of the other juvenile <laughs> films that we've done in the past. I, it's do nowhere you know near I, as offensive as some of them. No, I agree. And I, and I think what this had over some of those things, those, those movies we mentioned earlier, is I, I thought the cast were pretty likeable. Yeah, I think Charlie and Paula are both likeable I people. think they had good chemistry and i think both their performances were good yeah i liked i think the teachers were good i thought i liked his parents the, the dad was really good yeah um I, that that gives it a that puts it to the gives it a bit of a level past, above it? of yeah yeah it's nowhere near on the level of the, some of the other stuff we've done before fuck it list springs to mind swiped yeah. was another one yeah you can imagine this being made in america with noah centineo in the main role and Jason Mazzuc is playing the penis. Do you, do you know what occurred to me? Because I, I did, for a few minutes, I, I switched from the German to the the dub. The dub's not good. And I could just imagine like the voiceover artist getting it and reading through it and going, what the fuck are we doing today? <laughs> yeah. Hoo-ha, Willy. Yeah, Willy and hoo-ha. You've just watched 38 Wolvers. <laughs> we didn't even mention that We didn't bit. even mention that bit. It's like Fight Club style. Yeah, 38 vaginas on the screen at once. Yeah, it's on a scale of this 
show. It's not the worst juvenile, no. silly movie we've done. I don't. I'm, I didn't enjoy it. I'm trying to think. The message I is d- there. I don't think it may. I don't think it ever raised a chuckle. No. It's certainly not as much as you was talking about it. No, definitely not. the The message is there, and the message is a good one. The message is these two people are both going through exactly the same thing. But the girl is becoming a par- slut and a pariah. Yeah. And the guy is becoming a hero. Yeah. And that is a bad thing that happens in the world. Sure. And that's what this film's message is. So yeah. the message is there. It doesn't do anything to rectify that. No. Because she does forgive him at the end when she says clearly that she's not going to. Plus, like, Constantine gets off really lightly because he is awful. Yeah, he's awful. All he is through. awful. Years and years. He gets his tiny dick exposed to the school. Yeah, but everyone doesn't... Everybody exposes only, theirs as well. <laughs> yeah, only for a few minutes. He never covered then. it up. He just stood there and yeah. it, for ages. <laughs> it's Plus, like, in the, the odds, if you really want to play the odds, like however many hundreds of people were at that dance, Yeah, he's not going to be the only one with a... He's not going to be the smallest there, I wouldn't have thought. Who knows? Might have been. But, well, someone has to be, I suppose. But yeah. it's... Yeah, it's, it's not great, but it's not in the pantheon of awful terrible movies that we've ever seen no it's not what's the best thing about it i think it's it's charlie and paula yeah i think the performances the, the of the two actors good, to be fair what would you change does this move right i would suggest this go on why don't why do we need the talking genitals exactly for most what of the movie for to half this? the movie we don't get it yeah, well, they just don't talk just for 20 stop, minutes. Yeah. Once once we are into Act 3 and the, the sort of the climax of the, <laughs> of the, of the revenge, and they, yeah, they're quiet. Yeah. And did I didn't miss them. No, same. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why we need them. You could have written it without them. Is it just a gimmick to make it stand out a little bit different? From they're all not other sex fun comedies? characters. You could, you no, they're if, not. They're if really you're going to go with it, <laughs> let's go funny. with it and make them... I, yeah, have some good dialogue they're, or whatever, but they're just... If you're going to do a talking penis and a talking vagina, you've got to make them funny. Yeah. And they're not funny, they're no, just mean. they're not funny. They're just mean. Yeah. All the way through. They're horrible, both of them. So yeah, maybe that's where it's gone wrong. Maybe that's what's not sitting right with me then. Something's not sitting right with me about it, and I think it might be that, now we've come now we've said it. Because my, my, the subtitles for me, don't, like the, the pe- it literally just goes, the penis just goes, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, all the oh, way through. She's yeah. got great tits. Oh, what an ass. Blah, blah, blah. It's, yeah. like, it's just not... It's not funny. No. Yeah, you're right. Right, should we talk stream table? Sure. I feel like it's going to be an easy conversation. As the third best film we've seen this season. <laughs> also the third worst film we've seen. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't trouble anywhere near trouble the other I two. Do, I, I do not expect it to be right at the bottom come the end of the season. Oh, no, definitely. We'll see worse films than this this yeah. season. Definitely. Um, But it currently is. Yeah. It's, but it doesn't trouble those two at the top no. anywhere near. No. It, it will be very split from them to come the end of the season. Yeah, 100%. Well, that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> the stream tables always are at this time of the year, aren't they? It's next week and the week after, it's going to get a bit more troublesome, hopefully. Right, should we pick next week's film? Let's do it. What would you like to watch next week, Nick? Uh, should we do something English? I think... <laughs> Some free foreign films. An action films. movie. An action movie. Yeah, we've had... What have we had? Crime, horror... Comedy. Comedy. So if we want something dramatic or action-y. Yeah. Are you ready for me to press Robin's button? Sure. He had picked a movie called Riptide. Okay. Any ideas? I'm going to guess. Go on. Total punt. <laughs> that, what Surf- did you just call me? <laughs> Surfing movie. Okay. Um, Let me look it up on IMDb. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. There's a surfboard in the poster. Well, it's a surfing movie then. But the synopsis does not mention surfing. Would you like to know the synopsis? Yes, please. It says, I'll read you this one. Teenage model Cora is the daughter of the head of a major, major modeling agency and has always worked hard to live up to the expectations of her mother. When a damaging video of Cora goes viral, she despart, departs for Australia to spend time with her aunt Margot. Margot is also facing her own difficulties and the time together becomes a learning experience for them both. Oh, okay. The tagline of this movie is she's a fashionista out of water. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this sounds right up our street. It really does, doesn't it? 
<laughs> Currently rated at 5.5 out of 10 on IMDb and is an Australian movie. It was made in Australia. Okay. So I imagine it's going to be full of neighbours and home and away people, probably. <laughs> it's usually what happens. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm good for that. It's a family drama. Okay. Not an action movie that you wanted. So yeah, go out and watch Riptide. And in the meantime, check us out on Instagram, Twitter and Letterboxd at B-O-T-S underscore podcast. Um, if you want to drop us an email, our email address is bottom of the stream at gmail.com and our website is bottom of the stream.com. On our website, you will find every episode we've ever recorded, all of the stream tables, loads of other cool stuff, and you can even get some merch if you want to buy a bottom of the stream. What was the movie? Oh yeah, sexy things. Underwear. <laughs> Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> um, after you've done that, head over to Patreon, patreon.com slash bottom of the stream. On there, for five of your English pounds every month, you will get early access to episodes. You will get bonus episodes. You will get a wild card, which means you can pick the film that we watch. We will then tell you if it's any good. And if you pick the best one of the season, you will win a prize. You also get an exclusive access into an area of Discord that nobody else uses, which I always forget to mention. Um, and then when you've done that, head over to our Discord. Our Discord is a wonderful group full of wonderful people who will talk to you about anything. We play games, we do watch-alongs. We've got watch-along coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, Discord's just great. I love the people in our Discord and I'd like to see more of you in there. Yeah, 100%. And uh, one of the ways you can help that happen is by leaving us a rating or review anywhere you can review and rate podcasts. Uh, that helps get our show in the ears and in front of the eyes of more people. And if we do that, we'll make more friends, get more people in the Discord, and continue to grow our community. And uh, that's what it's all about. You can find us anywhere that you find your podcast. That's places like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Podchaser, all the big ones, all the small ones, all the ones in between. Come and find us. Come and find us. And then go out and watch Riptide. And we'll be back on Monday for The Wave and next Thursday for The Movie Show. Cheers. Bye.